keeping me awake, ain't she? No, you're keeping us awake. You want to make something out of it? Think about your folks. You're the only one who 
you have to work straight through to midnight. Now let me look at you. Well, they're after me too. 
got the top floor. Hey, look at this! We may call your magazine again. In Hoover they trusted, and now they are busted by Westbrook Penguin. <coughs> Thousands of once uh, affluent Americans are today living in makeshift towns called Hooverville. How'd it go today, Maggie? Seven million people in this town, and you can't even sell one lousy apple. And in New York City alone, there are more than a dozen Hoovervilles. Riverside Drive, Central Park. Hey, here we are, 59th Street Bridge. <laughs> Alone this time of night. I'm looking for my mom and dad. 
They're lost. Lost? Huh? Well, how long have you been looking for them? Eleven years. Hell, that's lost. <laughs> Don't worry, kid. You'll find them. You bet I'll find them. That's something I haven't heard since 1928. What? Optimism. What have we got to be optimistic about? Look at us. <coughs> Our life's a nightmare. Well, you've got to have a dream. Ships blasting our horns all night. To wake you up from a nightmare. <coughs> and these pockets. At least you got pockets, freezing finger. Lucky you've got them empty pockets. Newspapers for blankets. You can read in bed! <laughs>
Please, don't leave me. I need you. You know I love you. I know, I know. Kiss me like only you can. You may have. Children. 
why not? Because she's a drunk. <laughs>
Tokyo. How was your flight from Chicago? <coughs> Not bad. It took 11 hours. And we only had to land four times. Now, first things first. Has the painting arrived from Paris? Yes, sir. They're just unveiling it now, sir. Oh, yes. Hmm. No, I don't think so. Take it back. <laughs> Grace? Yes, sir. Messages? Yes, sir. President Roosevelt wants you to call him at the White House. I'll get back to him tomorrow. Anyone else? Yes, sir. John D. Rockefeller, Mahatma Gandhi, and Harpo Marx. Nothing urgent. What did Harpo want? He didn't say, sir. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's something about that lady's smile. <laughs> Maybe I could learn to live with it. Hang it in the back. Yes, sir. <laughs> Great. Yes, sir. I want my smoking jacket and brown oh. velvet pants. Excuse me, sir. I'd like to... Oh, and Mrs. Pugh? Yes, sir? I won't be having dinner tonight. I've got hours of paperwork to get through. Yes, sir. All right. Good to see you all again. Sir? Right. Dismiss the staff. Yes, sir. Grace? Yes, sir. You'll get your notebook in it. Who is that? Oh, sir, this is Annie. An orphan that will be staying with us for the next two weeks. The orphan? But that's not a boy. Orphans are boys. <laughs> oh, you just said an orphan, sir. So I chose a girl. Oh. Well, I suppose she'll have to do. Anyhow. Annie what? Sir? What's your last name, child? Oh, oh, I'm just Annie, sir. Miss Warbuck, sir. I haven't got any last name that I know of. So you're just Annie, huh? Just Annie. I'm sorry that I'm not a boy. I don't suppose you'd like to meet Lou Gehrig. Oh, boy, sure. Who's Lou Gehrig? I couldn't be happier that you'll be spending Christmas with us. Grace, we'll start with the figures on the iron ore shipments from Toledo. <coughs> what are we supposed to do with this child? It's her first night here, sir. It is? Yes. Oh. Well, Annie, your first night here. <coughs> I guess we ought to do something special for you. Would you like to go to a movie? A movie? Oh, I'd love to. I mean, I've heard lots about them, but I've never ever really been to one. Never? No, sir. Well, then we've got to do something about that right away. And nothing but the best for you, Annie. You'll go to the Roxy. Then an ice cream soda at Rumpel Myers. And a handsome cow ride around Central Park. Leaping lizard! Grace? Yes, sir. Forget about the dictation for tonight. We'll do it first thing in the morning. Instead, you take Annie to the movies. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, oh, excuse me. I'm um, Something the matter? No, no. Well, no, it's just a... No. What is it, child? You don't want to go to the Roxy? Oh, oh, no, no. I want to. I really do. <coughs> it's just that... Well, I just... Well, I thought you were going to take me. Me? Oh, no. I'm afraid I'll be far too busy tonight. <coughs> you see, Annie, I've just been away for six weeks, making an inspection tour of my factories. Oh, what's left of my factories with this depression? When a man is running a multi-million dollar corporation, that has... Oh, sure, that's okay, Mr. Warbus. I understand. Excuse me, sir. We're not the roof on the line. Ah, good. Hello, Barney. Yes, I got in an hour ago. No, Detroit and Chicago. I didn't like what I saw up there, Barney. Factory shut down. My factory shut down. You're darn tootin' when I'm not making money, nobody is. And your pal Roosevelt has got to do something drastic. He's got to come up with a new approach. A new plan. A new... something. Yes, I know he's a Democrat, but he's a human being too. Yes, all right, we'll talk about it. You come over here tonight. I can show you. 
Barney, make it tomorrow night. Tonight I've got a date to go to the movies with a ten-year-old girl. Eleven! I was mistaken. She's eleven. <laughs> Bye, Barney. <coughs> Drake? Yes, sir. Coats? Grace? Yes, sir. You'll come too, of course. Oh, yes, sir. Will you be watching the Bentley, sir? Or the Duesenberg? The Duesenberg. No, wait. This child's been cooped up in an orphanage. We'll walk. Walk to the Roxy? Sure. Why not? It's only 45 blocks. <laughs> NYC. What is it about you? You're big. You're loud. You're tough.
will go straight. Annie's getting adopted by Warbucks, going to be the daughter of a millionaire? Oh, no, 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 no. The daughter of a billionaire. <laughs> a millionaire? Yes, and Mr. Warbucks sent me here in person today to tell you that Annie won't be coming back here ever. Yes, 
those I had to climb over to get to the top. Because I always believed one thing. You don't have to be nice to the people you meet on the way up. You're not going to bother to come back down again. <laughs> but lately I've realized something. No matter how many Rembrandts or Duesenbergs you've got, if you have no one to share your life with, if you're alone, then you might as well be broken back in Hell's Kitchen. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you, Annie? <coughs> Sure. Good. Kind of. Kind of? I guess not. I was in Germany the other day, and I picked this thing up for you. <coughs> Had it in great. Oh, thank you, Mr. Warbucks. You're so nice to me. It's a silver locket, Annie. I noticed that old broken one you were wearing, and I said to myself, I'm going to get that kid a new locket. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here. Yeah. Just put this new locket on and then you... Oh, no, no, please, Mr. Wormus. I don't want a new one. Annie, what, what is it? This locket. My mom and dad left it with me when they left me at the orphanage. Oh, and there was a note, too. And they're coming back for me. No, Mr. Wormus. I know they'll be here with you for Christmas. I real life. You just 
far, Jenny. You may be meeting up with your mother and father within a couple of days. Really? <coughs> really. Oh, Arthur, Red, let's be kids about this!
<laughs> we were starving, and a man gave us the chance to manage to pull Helen May, but only if we had no children. Wrap it up, and radio soap has already started. We never meant to leave our little Annie. Annie? Oh, I don't see it. We have a hardware store in New Jersey now. We could afford to take care of her. We've always loved her. Your and parents? Our place isn't fancy. We live over the store. And we have a yard out back. We have chickens. And a rooster. <laughs>
You're never fully dressed without a smile. <laughs> Oliver Warbucks and Fred, Franklin. Thank you, let's show them in. Oh, Oliver, good of you to have come. Good morning, Mr. President. Well, who is this we have here? Mr. President, <coughs> this is my good friend, Annie. She so wanted to meet you that I couldn't resist bringing her along. <coughs> Just to say hello. Annie. Of course, the little girl who sang so beautifully on the radio last night. Annie? This is President Roosevelt. How do you do, President Roosevelt? How do you do, Annie? You're as lovely as you sounded on the radio. Thank you, President Roosevelt. Shall we begin? Annie, if you'll just wait outside. No, no, Oliver. Let Annie stay. I think a child on hand will keep us on our best behavior. Thank you, Mr. President. Annie? Harold, I don't want to hear so much as a gosh out of you. <laughs> Oliver, I believe you know everyone, but Annie, let me introduce you. Secretary of Labor Perkins, Secretary of State Hobbs, Secretary of the Interior Dix, Acting Secretary of the Treasury Morgan Thau, and my friend and aide, Mr. Lewis Howe. Have a seat. Now, Oliver. Since you speak for those happy few Americans who still have any money left, I'd like to begin with your views on matters. Mr. President, in the words of Calvin Coolidge, the business of this country is business. And for the good of you, the country, Wall Street, and me, we've got to get my factories open and the workers back to work. Yes, according to my latest figures, there are now 50 million Americans out of work, and nearly 50 million with no visible means of support. Mr. President, if I may say so, unemployment isn't our biggest problem. The dispatches from Germany are becoming more and more disturbing each day. There could be war. Who gives a... Uh, who cares about Germany? <laughs> People are starving in this country. Carol, I know, but in a long it's run, down for people who are starving, there is no long run. The trouble is, it's all happening at once. Stock markets taking another nosedive, sit down strikes, riots, floods, dust storms. And the FBI, they still haven't caught Dillinger. Well, at least we're all agree on one thing: the situation is hopeless. It's getting worse. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Shh, quiet, little girl. Harold, what did you say, Annie? <coughs> oh, that's all right. Still free country. Just thinking about. That's gray or lonely, 
I just stick out my chin and grin and say,
This has just come by a special messenger from the FBI. Ah, good. Agent Gunnison located the manufacturer of Annie's locket in Utica, New York. Oh, boy! That sort of locket was manufactured between 1918 and 1924. That sort of locket? Yes, over 90,000 were made and sold. Oh, no! Annie, I'm afraid that the gist of it is that Gunnison doesn't think there's a chance in a million of tracing your parents through the locket. I'm sorry. That's okay. I mean, you sure did the best you could. <coughs> you can't find them. Nobody can. Anyways, I guess a kid can get along all right without folks. You ain't turn up so bad. You got everything. All them dudes and birds hanging on the walls. <laughs> Someone, but who, who could that 
I haven't walked since the inauguration of William Howard Taft. Annie, I want to adopt you. Adopt me? Yes or no?
Yes? So. <coughs>
We've been up all night here, and we've had quite a time of it. FBI men coming and going. Annie, did you know that President Roosevelt is here? Really? Annie, I have something very difficult to tell you, and the President is going to help me tell it to you.
$50,000 certified. Certified. Came to the order of about much. Read it again.